So today we're talking about the best topic ever, <laughs> which is how to know if you have a mindset issue or a strategy issue and how to fix it. I feel like I get this question so often. Um, if I ever do like, um, like guest expert stuff, you know, like if I do a training in one of my clients masterminds or, um, something like that, I feel like this is like the number one question I get asked, which is super, um, interesting. And so good to just be able to answer this specifically, but it's funny that it's the number one question, but it totally makes sense because I think this is where we get really tripped up a lot. And I think it's also, um, a really wise question to be asking because if you can differentiate, you solve a better problem. And you know, like, that's my thing is like, how are we solving the right problem? Um, and so I love, love, love this question. I love when I get asked it because it, for me, it's like, yes, this is how we solve the right problem. First, we figure out what is actually the issue here? Is it mindset or strategy? And then we get underneath it and we can actually spend time solving the right thing, solving the right problem instead of waste time solving a strategy issue for five months and it was a mindset issue or vice versa, right? So very exciting. Hi, Jenna. Thank you for being here. If you guys are here, say hi. Also remember if you have questions during this, just let me know. I like, I'm going to just do some like made up examples, but if you have specific examples, by all means ask if you have specific questions, I would much prefer to uh, answer one of your real life questions, but i um, also going to make some up along the way. So um. The first thing that I always tell people when they're wondering, is it a mindset issue or is it a strategy issue, is strategy feels neutral and mindset feels charged. Hi, Heaven. It's good to see you. Um, so strategy feels neutral, mindset feels charged typically. So I'll just like give a funny example, but it's kind of like um, if if a client comes to me and is like, hey, my launch isn't going quite how I want it to, what do you think is going on? And I'm like, how many sales page views have you gotten, right? And they are immediately triggered by that. Like, I don't know, I don't know, I'm so overwhelmed. I don't know. I'm like, oh, great. Okay, so this is definitely not a strategy issue. This is a mindset issue, like, right? Or if they're like, um, actually, like I already pulled that, it's this, let me tell you, did it all. Okay, cool, like it's, we're more than likely running into a strategy issue. Let's talk about that. Like that's just a, a broad example, but it's like when it feels intense, when it feels charged, when it feels overwhelming, very likely it is a mindset issue. It doesn't mean you don't have a strategy issue underneath that, but it definitely means solve mindset first. So we're going to talk about that too, how sometimes it can be both. But there's always one to solve first. Um, so that's important to say too. Tristan said, all of my cues are earring related, so I'm holding off for now. You know what? It's so funny, Tristan, because I actually thought to myself, I should go put on earrings before this. And I said, well, I have these on, but like I thought I should put on, you know, earrings for this and I failed. So next time I got you. Um, hi, hi, John. It's good to see you. Thank you for being here. Hi, Jen. Um, okay, so mindset feels charged. Does that make sense? So again, it's like that example of like, if, if someone's like, oh, the launch isn't going well. And I'm like, cool, how many page views have we gotten? And you feel immediate <laughs> charge there. You can be reliably sure it's mindset. And that triggers people though, because they're like, but no, what if it's strategy? What if the launch really is going bad? And it's like, well, that's fine, but we can't figure that out from that Uber charge place. Right. If the question, what are sales page views is activating, then we can't yet have a strategy discussion. We first have to have a mindset discussion. And so that doesn't mean like, you know, you have to work on your mindset for two weeks and then we'll get to strategy later necessarily. But it's really, really helpful to see how if something is charging you up that much, you are very, very, very unlikely to make a strategic and neutral decision about it. So that's like the first question to ask yourself. If you're like, is it mindset or is it strategy? What's the charge? Rate it. If it's almost zero, let's look at strategy first. If you're like four, five, five and above, probably strategy, or I mean, probably mindset. Do again, doesn't mean you're not going to look at strategy 
later, but it means like we have to bring the charge down because I've never seen anyone make a really exceptional business decision from a five plus. You know what I mean? Very rare. So I'm just going to give you some examples of how this applies, but again, feel free to let me know like what are your specific questions around this or what are your specific scenarios and we can kind of walk through some. But um, so the, the first one I'll give is just that idea of like my launch isn't going well. Okay, great. So what do I do with that? So the, the examples I would give is like my launch isn't going well. So I am how do I want to say this? Okay. So my launch isn't going well. So I'm like in a neutral enough place to go look at numbers. I can go, okay, like what have been our open rates? What have been our click rates? What are our sales page views? What am I hearing from people? What, like if I can go and like start looking at data from a really neutral place, that's a good sign that I probably need to dive into strategy. If I'm like my launch isn't going well and the idea of even starting to look at data is really like activating me, it's probably mindset, right? And so those are just like helpful metrics of delineation kind of where it's like, okay, like, I don't think I'm that activated. Like, it's super easy for me to pull metrics. I'm not making a, a lot of stories about that. I'm not really whatever. I'm more in the like neutral curiosity position. If I'm like, the second I need to go look at that, I'm like already like, it won't be enough. It'll be awful. People aren't interested. This is a disaster and da, da, da. like, if I start putting story on top of it before I've even looked at the numbers, if I start um, feeling like really overwhelmed just at the thought of going to look at them, that really starts to tell me, okay, I have a mindset issue. So in that situation, it's like, cool, well, what do we do about that? We have to get the mindset back down to baseline so that you can decide if you have a strategy issue. I have plenty of clients where it's like, you know, like there's there's a launch roller coaster, right? You might get a lot of people at the beginning, the middle might dip a little, you might get a lot of people where there's urgency markers, you might otherwise dip. So some of it is like, I might be super, super activated in one of those dips. And then I calm myself down enough to look at numbers and realize that nothing is wrong. There really isn't a strategy issue at all. Or I might be really, really activated in a launch, bring myself down enough to neutrally look at numbers and realize that the, you know, issue is super obvious, right? Um, like the issue might be like, this actually happened to one of my clients not all that long ago, like she was like pretty activated. We were able to kind of like get her back down to a neutral state. We looked at numbers and it was so fucking obvious what was happening. It was that like, we just weren't getting enough sales page views. Like the people that were viewing were converting really well. And that was great. We weren't getting enough sales page views. So we were able to really strategically adjust the launch to do a much better job of pushing people to the page versus talking about it generally. And that helps. But like, if she was in that super, super intense activated place to really logically and neutrally look at, oh, like, yeah, that makes sense. Like my sales page views aren't that high. Like, da, 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 da. like, let me take these action steps. Your brain can't compute that. Right. So it's like, if I'm being, you know, chased by a lion on the Serengeti, I'm not like necessarily in the brain space to be like, well, like if I move my legs in this way, I bet I'll run faster. And maybe I should affirm to myself that all is well and all is fine. Like, no, right? We have to like bring down the intensity first so that we can make strategic action. And I think that's where people have such a difficult time is because when you're in that heightened state is when you want to do something super fast, right? So that's another way to know, is it mindset or is it strategy? When it feels like there is this, intensity to do it fast. It's probably mindset. Strategy very rarely comes with that intensity to do it super, super quickly, right? That's usually because I don't want to feel this way. Like, why do I typically want to do something right away? Because I want this feeling to stop, right? If you are making a move in your business because you want a feeling to stop, you have already taken the wrong step, <laughs> right? And again, I don't mean you can't have feelings in your business. I just mean they can't be the, um, the thing that is making your decisions for you because they are 
not going to be that very, uh, not going to be very strategic. And they're not going to typically give you the result that you want, because most of the time your feelings aren't going to say like, Oh, just send more people to the sales page. They're going to say like, everyone hates you or, you know, no one wants this program. Like it's going to be that intense stuff coming up that you really do not want to listen to or make decisions from. Um, you know, so that's the time where people will do crazy shit. Like Maybe I should just half the price. Like, obviously no one sees value in this. This is so intense. I want this to feel better immediately. Like, let me half the price. So if you're doing something from that place of, I want this feeling to change mindset. If you are doing something from the place of, I can just neutrally see what's happening here. And it makes logical sense to make this change. That's great. But sometimes you have to really, really bring down the intensity before you can decide on that strategic change. Is this making sense to everyone? Tell me if this is resonating and if I am at all making sense to you. Um, so that's just one example. Another example is that I hear a lot, right? Um, when I get asked this question, it's like, I've been doing the same strategy and it's not working. How do I know if I have a mindset issue or a strategy issue? This is the best one. I've been doing the same thing for a long time and it's not working. Or no, not necessarily even for a long time. Let me just clarify that. Most people have not been doing it for a long time. They feel like they have. So even that's the starting point. I've been doing something for a long time and it's not working. And I'm like, well, what's a long time? And they're like, 30 days. I'm like, okay. So this is just how we start to know it's a mindset issue because 30 days is not a long time in business, right? Like if I was truly thinking of that through a strategy lens, 30 days would not be a long time. If I am processing that through a mindset activation, 30 days feels like a long time. Does that make sense? Right. And again, it's like, are we doing it to escape a feeling? I am uncomfortable doing something for 30 days and I want the feeling to change. That is not strategy. Cool. Um, okay, yay, you're good. It is. Thank you. Jessica says yes. Janelle says totally understand. Jenna says yes, it does. Okay, good, good, good. Sometimes I'm like, yes, no, maybe. Perfect. Tristan said such a great point regarding making decisions to escape a feeling. Never thought of it in those terms. A hundred percent. Something I always say is like your feelings make a shitty CEO, right? Because like our feelings will tell us do this thing to change a feeling, right? Like I am uncomfortable, do this thing to fix that. And it's like, that's bad, <laughs> that's bad CEO move. Um, so yes, a hundred percent. So this, the same question of like, I've been doing something a really long time and it's not working. Um, so something I just want to like add to this actually, that feels really important to say is, um, I actually have a client right now who is, uh, shopping around, so to speak for, um, a Facebook ads uh, agency or person to, to run her ads. And um, she's been talking to a few different people and most people are saying something to the effect of like, Hey, if you're brand brand new, it's going to take us three to six months at least to get, you know, this really performing well and get you making really great sales off the back of it. If you have a relatively engaged audience already, we're looking at 60 to 90 days minimum to get a return on this. That's so important to say, because I think that we really think there are things in business that work in two weeks. And if we're not getting something to work in two weeks, we've just totally missed it. And like, even with this, where it's something like very tangible, like ads, if you're going, starting from zero, it's probably going to take months. If you're even starting from like relatively engaged, it's still going to take a couple months. Like that is so fucking important <laughs> to hear because that I see so many people create strategy issues when there are none. Sometimes strategies have to play out and like our industry, it just makes it seem like that's not true, but it's like, whether it's paid or organic or whatever, things take time. There is a process. And so I just wanted to like context that because I think that's like helpful to hear because I feel like sometimes like, especially like ads as an example, we're so quick to think like, oh man, if I only have like a few thousand dollars to drop on ads, then whatever. And it's like, it all still takes time. It also takes investment. There is no strategy that 
prevents your audience from having to get to know you and build a relationship with you. Like that has to happen. Relationships takes time. And it's sort of like how relationships work. Like I'm, I'm sure there is someone who has gotten engaged in a month and it went really fast and really quick and that's awesome and whatever. And I know most people that took much, much longer than that and that's fine and it's awesome and it's good still. The outcome is still the same. Do you see what I mean there? So it's really valuable to hear that in context of business because we are spending so much time creating strategy issues that are truly, truly mindset issues, right? So if you're in the zero to six month window or you're in the, you know, zero to three month window or whatever, be very careful to know if you're making a mindset issue by saying you've been doing it for so long because 30 days is not that, that's a mindset thing where the intensity is there. Does that make sense? Um, Janelle says like, when you say the space between when you are working and when the work pays off is the most difficult season in business, always a hundred percent, by far the most difficult. And this is where most people really, 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 really want it to be a strategy issue. <laughs> like if you're craving for it to be a strategy issue, it's probably mindset. That's an indicator. If it would make you wildly happy, if it was a strategy issue, it's probably mindset. Do you see what I mean there? Where I was saying this to one of my clients recently, like her brain loves a problem. Like sometimes there is not one and she wants one so bad because it's comforting to know here's a problem, I can fix it. It's really hard to be like, there is no problem except that I need to keep talking about this thing more. And I have to do the mindset work to feel comfortable doing that versus many of us like literally crave and have a craving for it to be a strategy issue because we're like, if it's a strategy issue, then I can like just fix it like that and everything will be okay and I can feel safe, right? Versus it might just be a timeline issue. So the way to know in that sense is how long have you been working on it? If it's less than 90 days in any regard, you probably do not have a strategy issue. You have a mindset issue of how can I stay in something for 90 days and let it play out? Every single person I've ever taken from zero to 10 K months from you know zero to hundred K always says this, I promise you, which is when they're in it, it feels like forever. And once it's happened, it feels like the blink of an eye. When they're in that zero to uh, 90 days or even zero to six months, they're like, this is taking forever. This is so intense. Oh my God. Right. And we have to do the mindset work. And then once they're like, oh, this is working. Oh my gosh. I can see how it's working. Holy shit. That was so fast. I can't believe I grew my business that fast. Right. But it's all mindset and perspective there. So that timeline, like that's the first thing to ask yourself if you feel like you've been doing something for so long and it's not working. Number one, how long? <laughs> Number two, what does it's not working mean? I know hands down if someone comes to me and says it's not working and I go, well, what, what do you mean? Like specifically what's not working? And they're like, I'm not getting clients. And I'm like, okay, but specifically what about not getting clients isn't working? And they can't answer that. They're like, I don't know. It's just not working. Mindset first, right? Because for strategy, we need to be able to drill down. And if the mindset is too intense, we can't drill down. So just like that launch example I gave, where like, if you are activated by the question, how many sales page views do you have? Mindset first. If you can't answer, well, specifically the thing that's going wrong with me getting clients is that I am getting people on the phone and they are saying yes, but then they're not signing the contract. And so I really need to figure out like how to tweak that last piece of my sales process. Perfect strategy because you can explain it neutrally, you understand the problem and we can work through it. Versus if you're like, I don't know, it's just literally not working. There's nothing else to say. I don't know. It's not like, cool, mindset. Does that make sense? And then again, you might do the mindset work and then still be able to drill down and be like, okay, now from this place, I can see that yes, this one piece of my sales process is broken or yes, I need to stay in it a little bit longer or yes, like, um, you know, I, I just need to feel comfortable like seeing this through. That's, that's a good indicator, right? Um, 
Tristan said, I was just saying that to a relative yesterday feels long when you're in it. It feels like the blink of an eye on the other side. It's so true, isn't it? So true. Thank you for sharing that, Tristan. I think that's so helpful for people to hear. Like, I'm sure there were plenty of times where you're like, this is taking forever. And then you're like, oh, that was like really fast to build a business, right? To make a bunch of sales, all that kind of stuff. Um, the other thing here is like, if I'm like doing something and it's not working, right? Another thing that I always play with there with clients too is like fundamentally, are you doing a strategy that works? So if someone comes to me and goes, my Facebook group is not working. I'm like, well, what's not working about it? And they're like, I don't know. My Facebook group is just not, it's just not working. And I'm like, well, fundamentally Facebook groups work. <laughs> so we either have to change the mindset around that first, or we have to figure out specifically what is it that's not working and probably both. <laughs> so when you're like blanketing, it's not working with some big thing, like Instagram doesn't work. Well, fundamentally, Instagram works really well <laughs> for traffic and clients. So if it's not, then what's going on, right? Like, so that, those are the things. If you're activated, if you're making broad sweeping statements, if you can't drill it down, if you want it to be strategy really bad, these are all indicators that it's probably mindset. Does that make sense? Like the broad generalization is such a thing. The mindset freak out examples make me laugh so much in self-reflection. I know it's so true. It's like, the, it's one of those things where you're like, it's funny because it's true, right? <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. Stephanie said, my brain went to, how can I neutrally explain this as a strategy issue so it can be a strategy and not mindset? Right. I feel like some of my clients will come to me and they'll be like, okay, I'm trying to explain this really well because I really want you to talk to me about strategy and then I'm like oh, I, mind that. I um I don't know if you guys listen to um I did a do the work series on literally a, a, quite a while ago before season three started and I had five clients on there and um one of my clients on there we were chatting about that and I I was saying to her um, when she comes to a call and is like, we have to talk strategy. I have so many things to go over and there's so many things going on and I'm so overwhelmed and da, 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 da. I'm like, I know for her, that means we need to talk mindset when she comes to a call and is like, cool, like feeling pretty good. Happy to dive into whatever's coming up today. Da, da, da. I'm like, usually we go in a strategy direction then because she's like neutral. So it's just like noticing in yourself and in your clients, like are we at neutral or are we way above that? If we're way above that, we have to bring it back down so that we can talk strategy. If we're, um, you know, like already at that neutral place, it's easy to dive in there. Um, Tristan said hundred percent. It was beautifully illustrated during Monica's season of the podcast too. The follow-up episode, she was like, it all happened so fast. That's so true, right? She like the whole podcast, she was basically like, this is taking forever and this is taking forever. And then she was like, oh, I hit 10K months and it feels like no time at all, right? Um, Cause it's not, it's just hard when you're in it. But that's why you have to keep checking yourself on, is it mindset or is it strategy? Thank you for that reminder, Tristan. Um, because this is where so many entrepreneurs self-sabotage. Like hands down the biggest place I see most people not build their business and self-sabotage self is because they keep making strategy issues where there are none. And so they jump around so much. They overwork so much because they so badly want to just find the strategy where it clicks. But like I was saying to you earlier, even with something like a paid ad strategy where someone's totally an expert in whatever, your people are always going to need a window of time to warm up to you, right? And so there is no strategy where it just immediately pops off most of the time. I'm not saying that never happens, but we don't play to outliers. We play to the norm, right? Which is normatively, it takes time to build a business, right? Um, and again, like the more you actually play to the norm, the more outliers can happen to you. If you're chasing over and over the thing that makes it pop, the less likely it is to pop. If you're like, I'm in this, whatever, the more likely it is to then be an outlier. I have plenty of clients who have been huge outliers. 
because they were willing to not chase the things that they thought would make them an outlier. Does that make sense? I know that's like a hard differentiation, but um, what most people do is they create strategy issues over and over. And our industry is built to solve strategy issues, right? Like if you think you have a strategy issue, you can find a course and put money down on it today to solve that. Our industry thrives off of people craving and wanting strategy issues. Does that make sense? And again, I'm not saying there never is any, I solve strategy issues all day long, but like, I'm just saying that in many ways, our industry is built to tell you that's the only issue, which is why you have to pay attention to where you're coming from. If you're buying a course with urgency and need and intensity, you can pretty, re pretty reliably know that's not a great investment and it's more of a mindset issue. If you've gotten to neutral, totally identified what's going on, where are your gaps, all that kind of stuff, and you know that this course solves that specific gap, that's great. That's We're talking about a totally different thing. But like where most entrepreneurs get stuck is they're in that really uncomfortable period where the launch isn't working or they've been working on something for a long time and it's not working. And they see something that's like, I'll make sure you never have a problem in a launch. Here's the launch strategy that works perfectly every time. And they buy it because the, the craving is to not be uncomfortable in that. The craving is to fix that, right? Or, you know, same, they've been doing something for 30 days and it's not working or whatever. And they so badly want to pull that in, right? They like want to fix that. So they buy that thing. They rework the whole strategy and they don't realize that they're spending so much time in their business answering the wrong problem or resolving problems that are not problems and working way, way, way hard because of it. So that's why this ability to determine mindset or strategy is absolutely fucking crucial. Um, because if not, you will keep making choices in your business to avoid a difficult feeling which will leave you doing a lot more work and getting a lot less results because of it. Does that make sense? Oh, Monica, we were just talking about you. How, how perfectly was that? That was like beautiful. Thank you for being here. We were, uh, Tristan was just saying how um, I was talking about how like sometimes it feels like forever when you're in it. And then when it happens, you're like, that was so quick. And he was talking about how uh, your season was a perfect example of that, which it was. So thank you for that. Um, and <laughs> yeah like meant to be. Um, so, so that's another example. I think, um, another one I'll say it, I'll give is like with team, like this is another one where like, if you're making big sweeping blanket statements and if you're feeling really activated, so this is something that happens to us a lot, right? Like we're like, I do not feel so I, like I'm not supported. I do not feel supported by team. Everything's wrong with team. So if a client comes to me and it's like in that place, I'm like, it's highly unlikely that your entire, you know, team is unsupporting you. And you're also feeling a lot of intensity right now. Let's talk about the mindset related to that. And then once we talk about the mindset related to that, it is much easier to be like, actually, it's so interesting because I'm super supported. The one thing that's happening is that I'm not being clear on deadlines. And so they're not being met. And so I feel unsupported. Right. So the, the gist here, and you can see this is like, how intense do I feel? <laughs> how specific is my brain allowing me to get right? And am I making sweeping judgments or can I like get into the details? If my brain is so um, in story and activated that I can't get into the details and I'm only making sweeping judgments and I judgments and I can't really drill down it's always mindset, you guys, <laughs> like always, always, always. And that's such a helpful context to just be able to ask yourself that, like literally write those things down. Like what level of intensity do I feel and how specific am I able to get? If you're above a four or five, like it's probably mindset. If your brain is like flipping out so much that you cannot get specific, probably also mindset. Um, I just see this with clients so often that it's so helpful to see the patterns, right? And it's helpful to hear them. So for me, I'm just seeing those patterns a lot. So it's really helpful for me to be like, oh, okay, like 
when I'm asking questions, we can't get into the specifics. She's super activated right now. Like, let's go here. Or, oh, okay, like when I'm asking questions, it's super easy to dive into the specifics. We're getting there really quickly and really easily. Oh, okay, we're learning this from the specifics. Cool, it's probably strategy and we can always come back to mindset later, right? Or again, the opposite. Oh, okay, it's like really hard, cool, it's mindset. We can come back to strategy later. Like you can always circle back around. Like we're not saying this is only a mindset problem and you can never fix this strategy or this is only a um, uh, strategy problem and you should never add mindset to it. And I think that's also where people get triggered is they want it to always, always be one or the other. And usually it's both. It just depends on the order in which you're going to solve it, <laughs> right? And that's what we're really talking about today. How do you know the order in which you're going to solve it? And it's those differentiators that I'm talking about, right? Um, Janelle said, can you share a couple of your go-to mindset tools and practices? Sure, totally. So, I mean, the, the first and most obvious here, though, I'll, I'll say it because it's relevant because it's the examples I'm using is like, have someone that can spot check you on this and that you can talk this out with. Like, this is why a coach is so valuable because sometimes for you, you don't see your own stuff. Um, and it feels so intense. Like, I just like know, like I can see it with some of my clients where it's like, they're like in this really intense place where they're like, it is strategy. How do I solve it? Like, eh. and like, they can't bring themselves out of that, but I can, pretty easily like do that, right? Like I can be like, oh yeah, totally makes sense. It's strategy because you're like level 10 activated. So of course it's strategy and they can like laugh and be like, oh, that's super funny. You're probably right. Like interesting, ha ha ha. Like, but I can spot it in five minutes where it would have maybe taken them five days to see that in themselves. So like, obviously that's just super helpful. And even if it's like not a coach, but like say you talk to a friend or your husband a lot, just having them help you note that like, Hey husband, if I'm like talking to you about this and I seem really, really, you know, intense, like, can you ask me like, what is, you know, what's the level of intensity I'm feeling around this? And I can get that reflected back to me. So just having someone to help you through those things and to be a mirror for that is really fucking useful. I feel like, um, it's like one of the things that is most useful to my clients is that I can, be out of it enough to really help them identify that. So we solve problems a lot faster. If it's mindset, we get to it quicker. If it's strategy, we run through it faster. So that's number one. Number two is like, look at your own story. So like, I think journaling is the most helpful thing, but whatever that is for you, like seeing what's in your head is wildly helpful when it's not in your head. So like, this is why journaling is so helpful because when you have to write things out, it is so interesting how differently you see things. Like I have this happen all the time with clients in base camp. They'll type me something. I literally had a message like this this morning from one of my clients. She like types out this whole thing, explains it. And by the end of it, you can tell that she's like, I can, t she's like asking me a question about a client. And then, then she's like, this is so funny because I, now that I'm typing it out, I can see this is totally my own shit. When I started writing this, I didn't think that, but now I can see it, right? So that's the same with like journaling too, whether you're journaling it, you know, out in, in base camp to your coach or to yourself, like the, just the space of having the differential of, from it being in your head to on paper sometimes provides enough perspective. So for example, like if I'm super pissed at my team or whatever, and I'm writing out, like, I'm so mad at my team because they didn't get this thing to me on time. Like, I can't believe they didn't get this thing to me on time. I feel so unsupported, da, da, da. And then as soon as I have that separation, I'm like starting to be able to go, I don't remember if I asked them to give me that on time. That's, hmm, that's interesting. Like, but when it's in your own head, it is so fucking hard to see that. So, um, and right, journaling, just another practice, like this separation between what's happening up here and putting it on paper, that perspective is so, so useful. Um, and then I think just like the, the last thing I would say is like just being able to um, rate the emotional intensity you're experiencing is a really good mindset tool because then you can actually figure out the ways that you bring that down. Like some people, it might be 
meditation, some people it might be, you know, talking it out, some people it might be journaling, some people it might be tapping. Like those are almost secondary to noticing when you need that, if that makes sense. Um, so um, I really like this uh, tool from the DBT workbook, the Dialectical Behavioral Therapy Workbook, which is called a Fear Threat Balance. I'm like super obsessed with this tool. I think so good, it's so relevant for business. <laughs> but basically you rate the intensity of the feeling that you're having on a scale of one to 10 and you rate the intensity of the actual threat. So for example, like my launch isn't going good. I feel like a 10 about that. The actual threat of that, well, I still have monthly recurring revenue from clients and honestly, like there's really nothing um, that intense about it, except like, you know, maybe I'm not going to hit the monetary goal I wanted, but like my expenses are still covered. So maybe the actual threat is a three. That is super helpful from a mindset perspective because you can see like the intensity of my feeling and the actual threat of this experience are not in alignment. So I need to go use a tool. And again, that tool might be meditation. That tool might be tapping. That tool might be journaling. That tool might be um, affirmations, right? But noting that you need to use the tool is actually like the best mindset practice, if that makes sense, because most people just don't catch themselves in it for so long. And that's how they end up having bought like five courses and changed their strategy six times before they're actually realizing like the threat and the feeling <laughs> were not in alignment and I actually need to handle the feeling. Does that make sense? Um, personally, for me, in terms of like my daily mindset practices, I love Think Up app. If you've ever listened to me, you know, I talk about that fucking thing all the time because I walk my dogs a lot. So being able to just like put in earphones and listen to my own voice, repeating affirmations is incredibly soothing and helpful to me. I love just like putting good thoughts in my head. So like one of my favorite books ever um, is Letting Go by David Hawkins. Another one is Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh. I just listen to those all the time. Um, read them a lot. So that's like, I'm not saying just read the same two books forever, but like put good things in your head, reinforce those things. That's something I do. And then I journal. That's like my go-to. I journal every day pretty much. Um, so those are mine. So hopefully that was helpful. Okay. Um, so helpful to have outside eyes. I have a coach friend who is super transparent for that. Yeah. Perfect. I think it's so, so helpful. Like we just have to catch ourselves in these things so we can solve the right problem. Like the success of your business will be based on solving the right problem. Right. And that's why it's so helpful to differentiate mindset or strategy, because truly, truly, truly the success of your business will be based on you being able to solve the right problem and how quickly you can do that. Right. I really feel like the, one of the reasons I have a ton of success with my clients is because that is something I focus on so consistently is helping them solve the right problem. And so top level, we have to figure out, is it mindset or strategy? Then underneath that, like, what are the right problems to solve? Like under mindset, it might be like, actually, I have like some worthiness shit that I really need to solve. Under strategy, it might be like, actually, I need to like show up and engage in my group more, whatever that is. But notice how there are so many things it could be. It's not like everyone has the same mindset shit. They don't. Like I have control issues. Um, if you listen to Happy Thoughts, I have control issues. Sarah has enoughness issues. Like our our solving the right problem looks totally different there. Um, same with strategy. Like every day I'm working with clients on strategy issues and every day, a lot of the solve the right problem looks different based on the client. And so that's why you have to start at this top level and then work your way down into the details and specifics. Cause those are going to vary greatly, but you're going in the very, very wrong direction. If you have a mindset problem and you're solving for strategy or going in the very, very wrong direction. If you have a strategy problem that you're trying to out mindset. So it's like, this is the top level and the most important to kind of like get right so that you can then drill down and solve the detailed issues underneath it. Um, so hopefully that's really helpful. If you have any questions on that, let me know, but I'm just going to kind of recap. So question number one, <laughs> How intense does this feel on a scale of one to 10? Kind of like that fear threat balance. So helpful to ask yourself, like, where is this? If you are above a four or five, 
get mindset going first, like sit down, journal it out, see what's coming up there. Like do not solve strategy from that activated place, or you're going to be solving to change a feeling. You're not actually going to be solving to make the right strategic move, right? So if you try to do it from that place of like, this is so intense, like whatever it is, my launch isn't working. You're going to make a decision on how to make yourself feel better during the launch. You're not actually gonna make a decision on like how to strategically bring the launch back. See how that's different. Um, second piece is how much can I drill down into the details? And then third, pieces like, you know, am I just like doing things that fundamentally work is another question I would keep asking myself there. I find, find that to be really, really useful for people. Like if someone's like, oh my God, this isn't working. And I'm like, well, what are you doing? And they're like, well, I'm showing up on Facebook. I'm going live once a week. I engage in my group and I, whatever. I'm like, well, all those things fundamentally work. So don't change that. Like what are the details within that? Right. Um, that's super useful because again, I think that sometimes we can get into this mode of like Facebook doesn't work for me. If you're making broad generalizations like that, fine set. So hopefully that helps um, and helps you just kind of like run yourself through some questions. Yeah, just because our brains are such ridiculous machines. Exactly. And that's what's helpful to remember is that they actually are machines and they actually are built to solve problems. And so being aware of that and, and, having these containers in this context to go through so that you're not just running from problem to problem so that your brain feels better. It's really fucking useful because again, your business will be built on the quality that, of solving the right problem. And so helping your brain get there is really useful. So hopefully this kind of provides a container with which to do that because it matters. Okay. So that's it for that. Hopefully that uh, gives you a different way to think about it and helps a lot. If you're watching the replay and you have questions, let me know. If you know you need a coach to help you with this, get on my wait list. Um, we're full until um, into next year, but um, hopefully at some point we'll be opening spots. So if you want one, grab that. It's a lituplife.com forward slash waitlist. And also if you get on the waitlist, you get to submit specific questions to me each month. You kind of get access to our mini membership site. I think we have like 16. Is that right? I think we have almost 16 or more videos in there of really specific questions too. So if you jump on the waitlist, you get access to those as well. Um, which I think are really helpful because they're very like pretty detailed in a way that um, you can't always get on live stream. So join us there at lituplife.com forward slash waitlist. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, if you, and if you're here, I keep meaning to ask this every live stream and then I keep forgetting, but if you're here and there's something that you want me to do a live stream about or you want to hear about, just feel free to like comment and let me know. Um, obviously like I always have a million ideas, but um, I want to make sure that the ones that you want the most are getting answered too. So if you have any specific questions you'd love for me to do a live on, let me know that. Join us on our waitlist and you can submit questions to me and have a beautiful week. All right. Bye guys.